Um, now I'm happy to introduce the two next speakers. Um, so we have Stephanie Chin and Stephanie Chin is the Digital Learning Specialist in University College Cork Library, where she explores ways to integrate new library technologies and spaces into the learning experience to support student engagement and success. Daniel Nowaki is in first year chemical science student at UCC. He had a long time, a long time interest in virtual reality, but with access to UCC library virtual reality lounge, he has upgraded from a VR enthusiast to a VR connoisseur. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say. Thank you, Stephanie and Daniel. Thanks, Molly. Uh, so uh, like Molly said, my name is Stephanie and I'm here with Daniel today and we're going to talk about VR in UCC library current experiences and our aims for the future. So just a bit of background about VR in the library. So it was developed in partnership between uh, the library and UCC's Center for Digital Education at uh, the CDE. And its aim was to explore the use of VR in education and provide UCC students and staff the opportunity to use new and emerging technologies like virtual reality. So the CDE co-funded uh, much of the equipment, but the library provides the actual space and service behind it. So we opened uh, the space in January 2020. Uh, and like Alan said earlier, it was awful timing because a few months later in March, we closed, uh, we were forced to close it for obvious reasons. Uh, and it stayed closed until recently. So we reopened it in November 2021, and it's been open since. So some information about the actual space itself. So we have an Oculus Rift with three sensors, an Alienware PC, and a large monitor inside the room so that you can share your immersive experience with others if you'd like. We have a variety of apps, including educational ones um, like Google Earth and ShareCare, which allows you to explore the human body and immersive experiences like guided meditation or tours of different locations and apps that encourage creation like Tilt Brush and Blocks. Um, so now that the space is up and running, we're hoping to start exploring what we can actually do with VR. So most recently, two of our student workers, Kara Long and David Lean, created two virtual spaces using Mozilla Hubs. And these two spaces showcase objects that have been 3D printed by the library and include a picture of the actual object and the 3D model of it. And the space can be viewed on your computer or in a VR headset and is an example of how we're starting to use this technology for the creation, dissemination and consumption of knowledge and information. But this is all just the beginning of where we hope to go. And the library's VR room is just one part of our space master plan. So we're continually considering new and emerging technologies and how they might be integrated into our services for all of our users. By offering uh, VR services and spaces along with other technology rich amenities, we're hoping to encourage cross disciplinary collaborations and projects similar to what uh, you'll hear, hear about today. And we're hoping to empower users to build their own capacity and digital skills and facilitate new forms of scholarship. Uh, at the end of the day, UCC Library is a place where people are at its center. So I'd like to pass you over now to one of those people so you can hear about how the VR room is being used. Uh, so Daniel is a first year chemical sciences student and um, he has been using our VR room a lot. So he'll be sharing some of the experiences now. Over to you, Daniel. Uh, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Daniel, and I want to talk to you today about my experiences with virtual reality and what I feel are some great benefits VR can provide in an educational setting. I want to start with some examples of how my friends and I have used UCC Libraries Virtual Reality Lounge. Uh, a bit of background. My first year course is general. We cover all four sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, maths. But my good friend Brandon has never done chemistry before. So after a lot of attempts to catch him up on two years of leaving cert, we decided to try doing it in VR using a 3D drawing program called Blocks by Google, I was able to describe to him chemical processes using visual aids. I could adjust and make small edits quickly and efficiently and ensure that he understood. Brandon, like a lot of people, is a visual learner. If I showed him something like this, he, and I imagine many of you, wouldn't be able to make heads or tails of it. But being able to draw components of molecules to move individual electrons around help, helped him tremendously. Similarly, I never did biology, so when we began the physiology module, I didn't even know what a lymph node was. To return the favor, Brandon brought me to the virtual reality lounge, which has a program called ShareCare that allowed me to view any organ in the human body. 
I'm also quite a visual learner, but the program doesn't just tell you the use of the organs, it shows them. You can view the cross sections of the heart, the kidneys, the stomach, and watch how they function. It's an entirely different experience to stand inside a lung as it inhales instead of watching a video on it. Brandon slowly taught me about the different organs and I, I can confidently say I know what a lymph node is. Despite me using the virtual reality equipment in both of these examples, the use was different in each time. In the first, I used it for teaching. In the second, I used it for learning. I hope my examples outline that while VR might seem like a per very personal experience, it can absolutely be used as a tool among multiple people. At the end of the day, VR is still a very personal medium. It is entirely different to look at a picture, watch a video or something, and to see it for yourself. I find that this is where VR excels. It's one thing to tell you that the Apollo 11 rocket was 111 meters tall, and another for you to look up, straining your neck as you do, trying to see the top of it. Virtual reality allows for this sense of grandeur without the real life drawbacks. You can't actually look at the Apollo 11 rocket because the only thing left is the command console. You can't actually visit Chernobyl. Uh, well, you can, but it might be your only visit. For those who are interested, VR allows you to enter a place that you thought you could never see. Well, while the advances we've made in space travel over the last 100 years have been astronomical, space is still a fantasy just out of reach. UCC Libraries Virtual Reality Lounge has a selection of space-themed programs, such as BBC's Home, which is an opportunity to see both the outside and inside of the International Space Station, a dream to most. A personal favorite of mine is Mars Odyssey, a program that allows you to explore the surface of Mars and interact with several different rovers humanity has landed there. It's obviously not a perfect representation of these places. You know, the gravity will be different, the air is a lot uh, denser, but as you stare out over the barren orange landscape, watching the sun rise on a planet you thought you'd never see in your lifetime, it's enough to get emotional. Virtual reality is a medium like no other, but the fact that it's so new is what's exciting. The ability to enter such a vivid simulation is still a rare novelty. And I feel that if ever VR became as much of a ho common household device as a computer, the draw wouldn't necessarily be for the possibility of going bird watching on Mars. So while virtual reality is still a new commodity, the interesting experiences it provides can be valuable. Another friend of mine, Ted, when first trying out VR was absolutely blown away by the realism. He spent minutes just staring at his hands, looking out across landscapes, ogling at the most mundane things like a bottle rolling across the ground. The joy I've seen VR provide for not just my friends, but for many of the people who have had the chance to use the library's virtual reality lounge is astounding. And good morale leads to good productivity. From my experience, VR can be used as a learning tool, a teaching tool, a medium for personal experiences and as entertainment for many, not just the person using the equipment. I hope that through sharing my time with VR, you can see its use for personal entertainment and the practical uses of virtual reality in an educational setting. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Stephanie and Daniel. That was absolutely fantastic. Really, really engaging. Thank you.